Hi kiddies, welcome to video 3.3 .3, where we're going to be talking about balancing equations. So here's the chemical reaction. We have hydrogen reacting with oxygen. Both are diatomic because of what? Honko breath. Yes. Uncle Briff. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine are all diatomic. Anyway, these are forming water. So we would read this as hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form or to yield water, H2O. Dihydrogen monoxide. Now, if I had to draw a picture of this, we can see that our initial condition is that we have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Then they are reacting to form water, which is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now you're thinking to yourself, that doesn't work. How can I take two oxygen atoms and end up with one oxygen atom? There's something called the law of conservation of mass that says matter cannot be created or destroyed in a normal chemical reaction. So is this reaction actually possible? Now I've changed this to show two hydrogens right there, reacting with an oxygen, an O2, to form two waters, two H2Os. So there's one water, there's one water. Now you'll notice that I have four hydrogens on this side, four on this side, two on this side, and two on this side for the oxygens. It is now what we would say is balanced. We're not violating the conservation of mass anymore because now we are considering different proportions. It takes two hydrogens for every one oxygen to form these two waters. So let's consider this particular animation. We're going to be reacting nitrogen with hydrogen to form NH3, which is called ammonia. We have a balance here that's going to show the number of nitrogens and the number of hydrogens. The left part of the reaction we always call the reactants. So nitrogen and hydrogen are called reactants. The right side is always the products, what is being produced. So on the right of our little balance here, our little seesaw, our products on the left for hydrogen and nitrogen are the reactants. So let's start with one nitrogen, one hydrogen, and one ammonia. You'll notice that we are not in balance. It looks like I don't have enough nitrogens on the product side. So if I come over here and change this number, what we call the coefficient, to two, now my nitrogens are balanced, but my hydrogens are clearly unbalanced on this side in the reactants. So if I come back to this side, ah, now we're happy face. One nitrogen reacts with three hydrogens to form two ammonias. Let's take a look at water decomposing to form hydrogen and oxygen. So I'll start with one of each. And it looks like my hydrogens are fine, but my oxygens are not in balance. I don't have enough oxygens in my reactant side. So if I come back here and change that, ah, I fix my oxygens, but now my hydrogens are out of balance. So I'm gonna come back here and change that. So two waters react with two hydrogens to form an oxygen. Normally, you won't show the one here when you actually do it. If there's no number in front of oxygen, we assume it's one. Here is our combustion of methane gas, CH4. Combustion means burning. We're combining it with oxygen. The burning of a hydrocarbon will always form carbon dioxide and water. So let's start with one of each. See where we land. Well, carbons are balanced. Too many hydrogens in my reactant and too many oxygens in my product. Doesn't really matter where I start. I know that I need a couple more hydrogens on this side, so I will change that to two. That looks great, but not enough oxygens on this side. Ah, perfect. So one methane reacts with two oxygens to form a carbon dioxide and two waters. So what is the secret to understanding how to balance chemical reactions? 
It's very simple. Now this right here is the process we need to consider. We're going to count the atoms on the reactant and product side. We're going to change a coefficient as needed, recount, then change a coefficient if needed, recount, and continue this process until the chemical equation is balanced. Let's take a look at an example. So we have sodium reacting with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. To be more descriptive, I can actually point out that sodium is a solid, water is a liquid, sodium hydroxide ends up dissolved in the water forming something that's aqueous, and hydrogen is a gas. Our first step is to make a list of the elements that are involved in this reaction. I have sodium, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now I'm going to enter my little loop. I'm going to start counting the number on each side. So how many sodiums do I have on my reactant side? I have one. How many hydrogens do I have? I have two. And how many oxygens? I have one. I'll come to this side and count as well. One sodium. There are a total of three hydrogens because I have one in the sodium hydroxide and then I have two in the H2 molecule. Oxygens are one. So we've done our counting, now let's make a change. It looks like I'm deficient in hydrogen on the left. So I'm gonna come up here and change the coefficient. Now I've got two H2Os. So that's gonna change my number of hydrogens to four. It also changes my number of oxygens to two. So now, when I look at this, I have too many hydrogens and oxygens on the left. I need to increase that on the right. So where could I do that? Well, I can change them both at once by putting a two here. Now that changes my number of sodiums to two. It changes my hydrogens to a total of four. So there's two here and then there's the two that are here for my total of four. Oxygens have now become two. At this point, I am deficient in sodiums on the left because I only have one. So I can make a change here, giving me two sodiums. And now I have two sodiums on each side, four hydrogens and two oxygens. I have a balanced equation. Let's take a look at this example. Chlorine reacts with methane, CH4, to form carbon tetrachloride and hydrochloric acid. So let's make our list. So let's do our count now. We have two chlorines on the left, one carbon, and four hydrogens. On my product side, I have four chlorines. Oop, I forgot about this one over here. That makes a total of five chlorines one carbon, and one hydrogen. Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm going to try to fix my hydrogens first. I have four on the left, only one on the right. So I'm going to make four HCLs, which will change my hydrogens to four. It now creates my chlorines to be four plus these four, a total of eight. Yeah, it seems like I'm digging a deeper ditch here. All right. Now to get my chlorines correct, oh, that's going to be easy. All I need to do is put a 4 here, and that's going to give me 8 chlorines. Now we're balanced. All right, here's another reaction where I have lead 2 nitrate reacting with potassium iodide to form potassium nitrate and lead 2 iodide. This is what we call the double replacement reaction. Now here's a little trick of the trade. When I go to count my atoms, I can treat the nitrate ion as one ion. Why can I do that? Because it's not breaking apart. It stays nitrate on both sides. I'm going to treat that as just one particle. If I had NO3 on the left, and then I had NO3 on the right, it's behaving as one particle. Now, if this was an NO2, that wouldn't work because this is an NO3. But I'm going to show you a little secret here. 
So I make my list, and then I just start counting. How many LEDs do I have? One. How many NO3s am I showing? Two. How many Ks? One. How many I's? One. How many Ks on the right side? I have one. How many NO3s? One. How many PBs? One. How many I's? Two. Hmm. So I have to fix the NO3s by putting a two here. That's going to change my potassiums to two, but it will fix my NO3s, so they are two as well. Now it looks like I need to fix my iodides. I can come up here, put a two there. That gives me two potassiums and two iodides. Wow, that worked well. One lead, two nitrates, two potassiums, two iodides on each side. Count, change, count, change. All right, in this example, we're going to react the hydrocarbon C5H10 with oxygen. Again, combining a hydrocarbon with oxygen means it's combustion. We're burning. It's going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Let's make our list. Now let's start our counting. I have five carbons on the reactant side. 10 hydrogens, and 2 oxygens. On the product side, 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens, and 3 oxygens. So when you have an element that's just by itself, it's easiest to do that last. A little trick of the trade. So I'm going to do my oxygens as the very last thing. So let's fix our carbons. I need to put five here as a coefficient to create five carbons. But that's going to change my oxygens to 10 plus that one, a total of 11. Ooh, doesn't seem like I helped myself out a lot. Now let's do our hydrogens. I can put a five here. That's going to create a total of 10 hydrogens. But now I have a total of... 15 oxygens. So what number would I have to put here to create 15 oxygens? What times 2 gives me 15? You're probably thinking 7.5. And mathematically that's absolutely correct. 7.502s. Except we don't usually talk about these fractionally. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to multiply every coefficient in here by a 2 to make this work. So there's an understood 1 in front of C5H10. I'm going to make that a 2. Multiplying 7.5 by 2, I get a 15. Multiplying the 5 by 2, I get 10. And multiplying this 5 by 2, I get another 10. So now let's double check this work. Five carbons, the two groups of that, creates 10 carbons here, 20 hydrogens, and 30 oxygens, 15 sets of two. For carbons on this side, 10. How many oxygens? 20 here and 10 there. For a total of 30. And for hydrogens, I've got 10 sets of 2, which is 20. So if you ever need to do something fractionally to make it work, go ahead and do that, then multiply it by a number that's going to give you whole numbers. So this whole thing is a patience and practice thing. Just count the numbers, make a change, recount, make a change, and sooner or later it will fall into place. Let's give this some practice, and thanks for stopping by.